Hey guys, Greg here at Let's Solve Merge Sorted Array, leak code number 88. So we're given two integer arrays called nums1 and nums2, and they're both sorted in non-decreasing order, which is just a weird way to say that they're ascending and there might be duplicates. So nums1 has m elements and nums2 has n elements. Now our job is to merge nums1 and nums2 into a single array sorted in non-decreasing order. Now what's interesting about this is the final sorted array should not be returned by the final function, but instead it should be stored inside the array of nums1. But this needs space, so to accommodate this, nums1 has a length of m plus n, where the first m elements denote the elements that should be merged, and then there's also an additional n elements that are set to zero and should be ignored. So it leaves n space at the end because nums2 has a length of n. Okay, so let's look at an example here. So we can see 1, 2, 3, 0, 0, 0. That is nums1, and that's what we want the final sorted array to be in and it tells us m equals 3 so the actual numbers of nums1 are the first three and then nums2 is 2 5 6 and you don't really need to be told that n is equal to 3 because you could just calculate the length of nums2 but it has three elements and our job is to take the 1 2 3 and the 2 5 6 and sort that into nums1 so that it would be 1 2 2 3 5 6 so those are all merging into the space of nums1 okay so we'd have our two arrays here here, we can see on the left we have nums1, which has its own m is equal to 4 elements, so it has this much space, and it also has n is equal to 3 elements of garbage placed at the back, which stores room for the numbers in nums2. Now the idea here would be to use three indices. I'm going to place one called x at the end of these elements, I'll place one called y at the end of these elements, and I'll call one z, which is going to be right here. So z's job is to overwrite the elements, and it's going to go backwards through this array, x is going to go backwards through its elements, and y is going to go backwards through its elements. And we basically just pick the bigger one of x and y. So between x and y, the bigger number is 6, and so we overwrite at z and set that to be a 6. We're going to move over z, and we use the 6, and so we would move over y. Then we'd again compare these elements, 4 and 5, you would want to use the 5, and so we overwrite with the 5, we move over the z, and we move over the y. Okay, now we'd want to use what's at x, and so we're going to overwrite this with a 4, we're going to move over x, and we're going to move over z. Okay, between the x and the y, they're both 3 and so it doesn't matter which one we pick. Let's just say we use what's at x. We're going to overwrite this to be a 3. We move over x and we move over z. Okay, now we'd want to use y and so we're going to actually get this out of the array. So this is going to be overwritten with a 3. We're going to move over z and now what's really interesting here is that y is out of bounds and if y is out of bounds, well that means we would just want to exhaust all of the stuff over here. But notice it's actually done and that's always going to work out that way, think about it, what you would do is basically just change this to be a 2, move both of these over, change this to be a 1, and move it over until we get them out of bounds. And so you're just overwriting the same number that's already there, and so once y goes out of bounds, you can basically just break out early. It has a time complexity of big O of n plus m, because basically you're just looping backwards through everything, and the space complexity is going to be constant, because notice we did not make any new data structures at all. Okay, I actually love this problem and let's code this up. Okay, so we're going to get our two indices x and y. Those are equal to m minus 1 and n minus 1 respectively. And we're going to do a for loop over z. So for z in the range of we want it to start at m plus n minus 1. So the very last index there. And we want that to go down inclusively to 0. So that's minus 1 and minus 1 in Python because this is exclusive. So it goes to 0 saying that we step down with negative 1. Okay, then we have a few cases here. Firstly, if x is less than 0, so x is going to be the one that's traversing backwards through nums1. If that is less than 0, that means that it's out of bounds. And so that means we've exhausted sorting all of the nums1 stuff, but we still have to place the rest of the nums2 things. So we set nums1 at z to equal nums2 at y. And we use the number associated with y, and so we'd want to do a y minus equals 1 to decrement it. Okay, another case here. Otherwise, if y is less than 0, so y is out of bounds. That means that there's stuff left to exhaust in nums1. However, we're actually placing the numbers in nums1, and its numbers were already here at the front to begin with. So that means you can actually just break here and be completely done because the numbers were already there to begin with. Okay, so another case here, if they're both in bounds of their array, we need to
need to do a comparison. So otherwise, if nums1 at its index of x is greater than nums2 at its index of y, well, we're trying to use the bigger number because we're filling it out backwards. So we want to use nums1 at the position of x. And so we'd set nums1 at z equal to nums1 at x. And since we used x, we want to x minus equals 1 to decrement it. Okay, then otherwise, we're in the case where they are either equal to each other or you have nums2 at y is bigger. And so either way, we're okay using nums2 at y. So we'll set nums1 at z equal to nums2 at y. We used y, so we want to decrement it. This is going to loop through and set everything. We can run this. It's going to pass our cases here. We submit and it's going to pass all of our test cases here. Now, this is such a good solution because it has a time complexity of big O of n plus m. That's the fastest possible and the space complexity is completely constant. O of one, we're not actually storing anything at all. We're just using X, Y, and Z. You could call this a three-pointer approach, I guess. Okay, guys, so I hope this was helpful. Check out algomap.io in the description if you haven't already, and have a great day. Bye-bye.